It's time I put my woodworking skills to good use to solve the biggest problem in my life. Where to put my beer when I'm playing pool in my garage. We have this collapsible pool table that we use during the spring and summer and fall. In the winter time though it folds flat and can I can sit it up against the wall, but we don't have a place to put our drinks when we're out side playing pool so I'm gonna build just a quick shelf that will fold flat against the wall when it's not in use and can be flipped up for, to be used when we're actually uh, in need of it for playing pool or something else it's not gonna be anything fancy we're just using some construction grade lumber here two by six and then we're gonna rip a piece off of one that will screw to the wall so that we can mount the hinges to that and then the whole table can just kind of fold flat against the wall I'm running them through the planer, not because I'm trying to make them particularly flat, but rather just to clean up each face so it looks relatively decent when we're putting our drinks on it. Next, we're just going to glue these together. Nothing fancy about this, just a little bit of glue, a couple of clamps, and then we'll let the thing dry so we can come back and clean it up. Once the glue is all dry, we can remove our clamps and then we're going to use a hand plane uh, just to clean up the, the big spots, the big rough spots and the seams along each board just to make it look a little bit better. Again, it's not important that it's overly flat, but we'll try to make it as relatively flat as we can. After we're done with the hand plane, we come back with our orbital sander and I think some 40 or 80 grit sandpaper in there and we'll just flatten it a little bit more. Now that it's flattened, we're just going to square it up. Uh, the overall length, I believe, is about seven feet, which is what would fit nicely in the space that it's going to. So we're just going to cut uh, most of the wood off of this one end, and then we'll just square up the other end. That little circular saw that I'm using is just a battery powered, small little Mastercraft thing, but uh, it does a beautiful job for stuff like this where you don't want to pull out your corded power, your corded, corded circular saw and make a big mess. This thing just pull it out and use it and put it away. It's perfect for a job like this. And then we'll just sand up those ends so that they don't look too rough and ugly. And we're going to use some diamond, uh, some Verathane diamond finish on this stuff. It's a good hard surface. Uh, it seals the wood so that when it's outside during the winter months, hopefully it's not going to warp and get all bent out of shape. It goes on nice and smooth and makes a pretty decent looking countertop when I'm done. In between each coat, I think I put on three, three coats, two or three coats, or at least three if not four coats, and we just sand in between with some 240 grit sandpaper just to give us a nice smooth finish. I did this on the top and the ends and that front edge and then I just put uh, a coat uh, on the back edge and the bottom but I didn't bother getting too fancy with that just because it's never going to be seen. Wipe it clean in between each coat and we get a nice smooth finish. All right, the next part of the job is to install this thing on the wall. As you can see, I've got this board and batten siding on the inside of my garage. The previous owners put it there for some reason. I'm not really sure why. don't really care, but we do need to make a spot for that one small piece to screw into the wall. I want it to be flush on there so it's nice and secure. So I've got to cut out a small chunk of each one of those battens in order to make room for the piece that will screw into the wall. And all I've done here is I've taken a piece of a half inch plywood and a three quarter inch piece of probably pine or something like that and I screwed the pine to the plywood and then I took that small circular saw that I had and I just ran it with the fence along the pine so that it would cut the plywood at the exact width of the um, the shoe or the blade where the blade sort of comes off and cuts the plywood you know what I'm trying to say sort of making my own little track saw for this and then what I can do is I can just screw it to the wall and run the blade along that track and it'll cut those battens and I just adjust the depth of the blade so that 
it cuts the battens and not the wood behind it. Once that first section is done, all I do is I carry on and I move the track over to the next set and keep going until I've cut all the battens that need to be cut in order to make space for the shelf on the top. And I took a measurement there and I needed to get one more batten. My little jig there is just a little bit too small. So once you've done the top ones, I just went along with the piece that was the, the piece that is the thickness of the piece that I'm going to be screwing to the wall and marked where the next set of cuts had to go, screwed the jig to the wall again, and then I just ran the saw across it one more time to complete the cuts. And once that's done, I can then just take those pieces out and I'm left with a relatively clean little gap that the piece of wood that the shelf will attach to can screw into. Next, we've got to make uh, some supports. So I decided I would put three supports, uh, one in about the middle, one on each end uh, to hold the shelf up. And these aren't gonna be anything fancy. There's just gonna be a vertical piece, a horizontal piece, and a diagonal piece that goes between the two for support. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is just mill all this stuff down to size. And I think there are one, two, three, six, nine pieces or so that I need. Uh, to build all three supports. So I just rip it down to the so it's the right length and width and then over to the miter saw to cut the length that I wanted, which I believe was about 18 inches for most of them. The diagonal pieces were a little bit shorter. And here we're just taking one of our uh, vertical pieces, one of our horizontal pieces, just kind of laying them out how they're going to go. And then I didn't really know how long the diagonal pieces needed to be, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and putting some rough marks on the piece so that I can then cut them to the appropriate length. And for that job, uh, we're gonna take out the 45 degree cross cut sled, which you might've seen in our box making uh, video. And if you haven't, I'll leave a link somewhere, perhaps up in one of these corners so you can go watch that as well if you're so inclined. So after everything is all set up, all we do is just zip off these corners to make ourselves three diagonal pieces that will go in between the horizontal and the vertical pieces. And after putting it together like this and looking at it, it looked okay. I was just going to screw it together. But then I thought I wasn't really sure about how heavy things were and I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to have any issues. So I decided what I would do is just put a notch in both the horizontal and the vertical pieces so that the diagonal piece could sort of recess into both of them uh, just to give me some added strength or at least in my mind it gives me some added strength. So I just marked where those need to go and now I'm going to use my cross cut sled and I'll cut all three uh, horizontal and all three vertical pieces uh, together just so that I know they're all going to be exactly the same. So I'm just lining them up where the mark needs to go or where the cut needs to go with the marks on the, the piece that I marked and then I just start taking small slices out of them with my table saw and just scooching the pieces over a little bit each time. My table saw doesn't take a dado stack so uh, this is the way I do it. It doesn't take very long at all. So once all that's done then again I go back and I just dry fit them together and everything looks good so I am going to go ahead and just use some construction screws and screw everything together. Once they're all assembled, I'm going to attach a couple hinges to them. I decided I'd attach the hinges uh, to the support pieces first, then attach it all to the wall at once. And I thought that seemed to work pretty well. So on go the hinges. Now we can attach them to the wall. And I just line the top of the horizontal piece up with that gap uh, that I had cut for the supporting piece on the wall. And then I'm screwing the hinges to the wall itself. You can see that middle one is not in the middle. For some reason, I decided it was important that it was uh, up flush against the batten. So that's why it's where it was. But looking at it now, I kind of wish I put it over in the middle. There's that piece that we're going to attach to the wall that we'll then be able to screw the hinges to. Uh, that will also be screwed to the shelf itself. 
and we're just setting that in position and screwing it into the wall. And I don't know if you saw there, but I noticed that we do have a small problem uh, that those won't fold flat against the wall because the other battens are in the way, but we'll solve that in a moment. But first we're gonna just throw the countertop on there just to see how everything looks. And I was pretty pleased with the way that turned out. And you see it passes the finger tapping test, so we're good to go. So now that it's on there, I just go underneath and I take a couple of hinges and I'm screwing one side of the hinge into that piece that we screwed to the wall and the other onto the shelf. And then we just repeat the process again and I believe I put three hinges in, one in the middle, one in each end. Now we just gotta go back and solve that problem about those not folding flat against the wall. So I'm just using a pencil and marking on that one batten where the diagonal piece intersects it and then repeating for the other two. And then I'm just taking my Dremel multi-tool and just slicing through that batten until I get to the back of it so that I can pop it out. And of course there's a nail right where uh, I needed to pull it out so we'll just rip that out and then we'll fold it flat to realize we need to take out a piece of the next batten as well because it just catches that piece also. So again we'll just mark it and then we just cut it and then we can knock that piece out and now it folds flat. And then we just have to repeat the same for the other two supports. And that's it. The shelf is done and installed and working perfectly. So in the winter time, I can just fold those braces against the wall and then fold the counter down so it's out of the way. And then I can put the pool table there and still get my truck in the garage. And the beautiful part, of course, is that I still now have a place to put my beer when I'm actually going to play pool. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to click the like and the subscribe button. Uh, everyone says it always helps out my channel. Uh, I only have three videos at this point, so I don't know how much it actually helps, but I guess every like and every subscription uh, gets me closer to having more likes and more subscribers. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.